the meeting to order. Call the roll. Trustee Fenton. Trustee Dadge. Present. Trustee Calendrello. Present here. Trustee Healy. Here. Trustee Katsinas. Here. Trustee Milani. Here. Mayor Peacock. Here. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of, the United of the United States, States of America, of America and, and to, to the republic, republic, republic for, which, for which it stands, stands one nation, one nation under, under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Approval of March 16, 2020, Committee to Hold Minutes. Trustee Katsinas, Mr. Mayor. Trustee Katsinas. I move to approve the minutes of, of the regular meeting of the Committee of the Whole, March 16, 2020. Trustee Calendrillo, second. Call the roll. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Calendrillo. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. And, and one thing I forgot to read at the beginning of this that I'll jump in right now, um, because of the COVID-19 outbreak the, and per the governor's order, this meeting is being held virtually to limit in-person contact. Um, in order to best facilitate this meeting, if you're not a trustee, uh, please, or the clerk, please mute your microphone if you're not speaking. Um, these virtual meetings work best if we're not speaking over one another. Please announce your request to speak along with your name uh, since video is not being displayed. And for public participation, follow the instructions on your screen. Thank you. Trustee Initiative, short-term response, aid as a result of COVID-19 outbreak. Trustee Calendrillo, Mr. Mayor. Trustee Calendrillo. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I put this on the agenda today uh, because I think we need to talk about economic aid for our businesses now and not waiting uh, till the stay at home is lifted uh, to start our, helping our business. I've talked to a lot, numerous business owners, and they say the same thing. They need help and they need it now. Um, out of respect for you, and uh, I've asked that uh, we just limit our conversations to so the long term. I know that you are working with staff and others regarding long term solutions, so I asked to limit our conversation just based on short, short term aid. Um, our businesses are being hurt hard uh, now and we need the, the help now. I truly believe that that's why I put this on here. And it's our responsibility to help them now. Uh, we are one of the largest economic bases, as you know, uh, in the Cook County and the state and we need to act like it. And that's why we need to act now. Uh, I recently read the Chicago Tribune editorial, actually today, I believe, that calls on local governments to step in because local governments are best suited, they quote, they say this, to identify problems and coordinate help. And that can't be done by the federal aid. Um, according, additionally, according to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, more than 40%, about 40% of businesses will close for good within the next two weeks. And the federal loans, by all reports, may not be able to help soon enough. Um, I'm sure, we, I know we have an accounting on the board. I could probably talk a little bit about those issues. Um, there, additionally, there are 13 times more people requesting for small business loans than last year, than the whole year last year. Uh, we need to help the aid of our business and we need to do it now. I, I truly believe it's our duty to act now. Uh, locally, uh, there's examples, New Lenox, Rockford, Aurora, Lockport, Homer, Glen, Crestwood, and to name a few. Uh, we can afford this because we've been good stewards, as you have been, and we have as a board for a long time to be good stewards of our tax, uh, of, of our tax money, of healthy reserves. We're over, I believe it's 31% with reserves. I asked, I would like this conversation about short term because it is needed and it is needed now. At the end of the day, it is our responsibility to help our businesses now. We depend on them, as you know, our economic success, that's why we can keep our property taxes low. And it's time to return the favor at this time for the help. And, and this is what we truly need to do. I respect your wishes about the long term and keeping that uh, uh, down the public view, but we need it now. And that's why I want to bring this place on the agenda because I want the residents and the business people and everyone to know that we need to, this is my position. And if you disagree with that, I respectfully disagree with that, but we need to help our business now. Thank you. Um, so now, so now I'm going to ask the, uh, 
the uh, board members if they want our staff to spend resources and time to put this all together, to put this on a uh, board meeting for the next board meeting. Uh, Trustee Katsinas. I'm sorry, Trustee Katsinas, no. Trustee Healy. Trustee Healy, no. <clears throat> Trustee Milani. Uh, this is Trustee Milani, no. Trustee Dodge. I think we should work it the way we have been, uh, Mayor Peacock, which is to flow ideas to you and George and keep working the problem. Not. Okay, well, uh, I'm also a no. So this dies for a lack of even a second vote. Um, I, I wanna take the opportunity for everyone to explain what happened here. Um, when this isn't seconded or discussed, the other board members are really making a statement to their fellow trustee that this really shouldn't have been on the agenda. I'm gonna be a bit more blunt than that. One trustee with no support forced us to have this meeting where there's no other business. This is an attempt by one person to grandstand and play political games during a crisis. This is unacceptable. Everyone else on this board has been working at a team as a team without worrying about seeking any accolades. Every other trustee has been forwarding ideas to George and me regularly. So of our economic development advisory board members, everyone has had good ideas and some that weren't workable. But the fact is they're giving us ideas. Trustee Katsina is, is also volunteering on her own and under the radar to give back. Trustee Dodge had the idea to make the line of credit even larger than what Judge George proposed to ensure that we had the cash flow we needed. Trustee Healy has been helping cl his clients with SBA loans from the CARES Act and had the idea to organize a group of volunteers to help small businesses apply for these loans. Trustee Fenton has been in regular contact in spite of some recent health issues that she's dealing with. Trustee Milani is an ESDA volunteer and has been giving his time in Orland Park and other towns during this crisis and pitched in with me over at the food pantry. My point is none of these trustees have sought any credit or airtime for these actions. On the other hand, one trustee contributed his first idea since the crisis began on Wednesday of this last week but demanded that we discuss it in public because he wanted to grandstand and get credit. The federal government is providing significant resources through the CARES Act. The residents of Orland Park will receive over $36 million between the $1,200 and $2,400 that are being given either to individuals or couples. The $10,000 payroll loan to small businesses will provide approximately $20 more million to our small businesses. Additionally, those businesses can qualify for up to $10 million in forgivable loans and $2 million in disaster loans. That in total is well over $50 million. The village cannot provide those kinds of funds. But Trustee Calandrello indicates that we're not really doing anything to help our businesses is what he's implying by this. Well, that makes me realize that many of you may not be fully aware of all the village is doing to help our small businesses and residents. And, based on, and that's based on the input of those other trustees, our talented staff, our commission members, and the public. We've, we've been doing paid advertising to support our small businesses and restaurants that are open during this time. We've had regular social media posts to remind people to support our businesses and restaurants, as well as to update them on what is going on with the SBA. We've promoted the Orland Park Chamber of Commerce page at, at, that promotes both Orland and Tinley establishments. We've sent a letter and business resource guide with all of the CARES Act and business resources to our entire 1,200 business constant contact list. Also made that available on the website for our other over 1,800 businesses. We've relaxed many of our normal rules to make it easier for businesses to operate in this environment. We've continued to lobby the governor's office to help keep our essential businesses open. We recently found out that uh, there's a K, uh, KN95 mass sourcing problem for medical business. So this weekend, we've put together a program to provide those medical, uh, those medical offices with KN95 masks for a donation just to cover the costs. We've also implemented a program seeking volunteers to help businesses apply for these CARES Act loans. And we already have several volunteers, including Trustee Healy, step, stepping up for that. Um, we also, as you recall, held a special meeting to give George, George and I the authority to pay our bills immediately as many of our suppliers have liquidity issues. This money, this gets them their money within 15 to 30 days. This came out of a conversation I had with a national restaurant change CFO. 
Now, many of you might be saying you're doing stuff for businesses, but what about the residents? Well, first, helping our businesses helps our residents. The main reason we can offer all the services we do and keep our taxes low is because of our business community. We have to ensure their survival. Second, we are keeping our employees working. While the state and county continue to pay their employees with tax money from our residents and businesses for staying home, we are keeping as many of our employees working as possible. For those whose positions aren't currently needed, we have found ways to help them uh, provide essential services. It is important for your tax dollars to be productive, and we are doing so. It, is also, it also gives our employees a sense of camaraderie and purpose during these difficult times. Finally, this ensures that we will be in a better position to recover when this is over. Also, here's a list of the other things that we've done that directly benefit our residents. The day after we were first briefed on COVID-19, we held an informational meeting for all our school districts, the townships, the fire districts, and our neighboring towns. At this meeting, we gave them all the information we had and pointed out that we would be creating a, a website and other public health related information that they could use to help their constituents stay informed. We continue to coordinate with federal, state, and county emergency management organizations. We have waived late fees, late fees and discontinued shutoffs. We, have immediately, we immediately enacted our disaster planning and started coordination with the Fire Protection District, Cook County Department of Health, and, and includes a, a pharmaceutical distribution plan if it ever becomes needed. We created a website that is a single point of con information for residents, businesses, and, resource, and resources like the CDC and the WHO. We have regularly created and disseminated videos to keep our residents informed and apprised of the latest COVID-19 information. Those have included me, our police chief, our fire chief, and professional health experts. We have sent out code red emails and phone calls to keep our residents informed. We have continued, as I said, to lobby the state and county to ensure that we stay informed and our residents have the resources they need to stay healthy. The bottom line is we don't know what's gonna happen with state and federal money. Federal money is going to the state and to the county and we don't know if we'll ever see it. We have to preserve our resources because we don't know how deep this hole is. With all of this that's happened, we've remained transparent. As key information has become available, we've shared it. We have also been working on a long-term recovery plan as this event, like I said, could last a long time. The Village of Orland Park cannot throw away, or re throw away our resources on programs that have little to no impact. The federal government is distributing local relief funds through the state and county, as I said, and it is important not to squander the few resources we have for little impact on the short term. We need to have those funds available for the recovery that will follow when things open back up. I am hopeful that going forward that all of the trustees will work together as a team and continue to provide ideas. To date, it's only been five of them. With that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, Trustee Calandrillo. With that, Mayor, I will entertain a motion to ask, adjourn. You had an opportunity to speak. You are out of order. There's closing there's closing remarks. I can use my closing remarks for the meeting. Are, to there, are, there are no closing I remarks for the call. I disagree, Mr. Mayor. I, I, you can have closing closed. remarks at the board meeting. I respectfully disagree. I appeal the I will appeal the Mr. Mayor. I you called me out, and I and about this issue. I prefer to end this issue here and not to go to the uh, to the board meeting. I rather prefer to end this discussion now, so we have a productive board meeting. Trustee Calandrello, you are out of order. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I request a roll call. Vote, call please. the roll. Who was that who seconded it? Trustee. I'm sorry. Trustee Healy. Call the roll. Trustee Getzinas. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Calandrello. No. Trustee Milani. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. The motion is the, the uh, committee of the whole is adjourned.